welcome back everybody um, video today is by request um, I've had a number of requests for this um, from the video that where I showed we had a problem with the lead screw and the anti backlash jamming and the people that asked me is how do I strip it apart to actually do this well I'm going to show you that so that's the video today so let's get into the video machine i hope you can all see it's clear it's very difficult to get it all in but what you this consists of is removing the front bar or side bar um, you can either do the inside one or the outside one it doesn't make any difference i prefer to do the outside one that's why i've turned the machine round. and the first thing you do is i've moved it down to a suitable position okay so i can get to either side of the anti-backlash the first thing i do is i put tape round this um guide rail okay now this guide rail here um you nail although it is square and it keeps remain square um it's just an indication when you put the tape around that it doesn't move okay you don't want any movement in it although it's tight at that end okay i just do it for reassurances you might choose not to do that but um this is the way i do it um, so the first thing I'll do is remove the sidebar, okay? And you need a good Allen key. Make sure that the Allen key that you're using is a good one. It's not worn, okay? Because these, I can assure you, are tight. And if you don't have a good Allen key, you'll strip them. And you'll have to drill them out then. Okay, so that's all they are those type of screws put them somewhere safe that one and then these two and you can hear the crack on these and i haven't had these out before and if you don't have a decent allen key you'll strip that head okay just hold it then when you take it last one out you don't want it to drop on the floor. That is the side cover off, okay? Right, so that exposes the anti backlash, which is the big part is here, and the other part is here, okay? So the next thing we do from there is, and you can see, these have been cleaned, but look, you can see the dirt that's accumulating. I used the rotor the other day, um, uh, I put it back on, just rested it back on now, but um, I used it the other day just to turn a, um, a ball type thing, something that we're doing for a project. And uh, I'm happy to say it kept a lot of the dust off that. That's like a wet lubricant, that that i used i tried a different one this time and you can see the lubricants on it but there's very little dust so they've done the job really um, the next thing we're going to do is put the tape around the guide rails put it as close as you can Tear a bit off to the actual seal, okay? Then you know if this moves. As I say, some people doing this might not even bother. I do it. Um, I'm just showing you the way I do it. If you want to choose to do it a different way, that is entirely up to yourselves. So as you can see there, I now have tape. I'll bring you a bit closer and then you can see if I can do it without blocking the view. 
you can see the tape down there now okay just get a bit more light in there so I know that that's stationed it can't move anywhere near there okay right once we've removed the um, the side cover um, it and I've put the tape round as you can see round the um, guide rails we need to remove the other cover now that's the second side rail removed so that exposes a hole two guide rails and the lead screw anti-backlash there tape round now we're ready to remove the actual stepper motor okay right the next thing we do is disconnect the stepper motor cabling okay that's that that's simple that's just underneath okay now don't get in the habit of thinking that these screws on the outside secure that to that it doesn't that holds your motor together what holds your um, stepper motor on is these four screws on the inside that's why you have to take both sides off okay so remove those now bit fiddly but they do come out as I say you need a good allen key and make sure this is a ball one but this one actually reaches in there to get the heads so you need a good fit again because they're put in tight these have come out reasonably easy because I've already had it out when I've done the jam you feel the step and what you can see it rocking there okay just keep screwing and then what I do is if you turn the knob at the end you'll see right you see it's disconnected just keep turning make sure you've got enough room at the back okay and just keep turning the actual lead screw see it's come out of the bearing at the end okay now you can I prefer mine at this side and I screw it right the way through because it um, you could set it up up there so that once it's out that'll draw out but what I like to do is I like to run it through the threads and that cleans off you can see a bit of residue on there so it's cleaning off and it's utilizing the anti-backlash just keep screwing it doesn't take much and you see why I don't want that to move although it's locked off at the other side So I'm now, it's like cleaning a lot of that dirt and debris off that. Uh, if it was up at that end, you'd only screw that little bit out and then it comes out. Well, it, you haven't run the actual thread through the anti-backlash. So that's what I like to do. Take it as near as I can up this side and then unscrew it all. But you might choose to do it up at the other end. It's entirely up to yourself. Now I can feel that anti-backlash getting tight there. I can feel that a difference when I'm turning it. Uh, and that's because it very rarely gets any use up there and it's picking up the dirt off the thread now. Yep, I can see that. You'll see what will happen in a moment when I carry on screwing. See, and that is your part of your anti-backlash. Okay, you'll have a spring. You see that? I'll see that spring. That'll pop out, and then you've the other part. So you can just spin that off, and can you see grease and debris inside there? Look, you can see it. Look, that ain't just grease. That's debris this on mine was packed solid it continually picked it up and picked it up and I didn't realize so I've taken that off now and you can see the dirt in that and that's already been cleaned and I haven't used an excessive amount of lubricant that's 
um, the impact of using getting dust onto the machine before I put the guards on okay so that is one lead to go out one stepper motor and the rear part the small part of the anti-backlash okay so I'll pop that there I'll get a cloth right I'm going to just wipe this off can you see and that isn't just the lubricant that's actual dirt okay I do want to put them back on I have a special uh, it's a it's like a white silicon grease that I do put in because um, I feel it needs some lubricant I've tried various things and I keep trying things um, that you don't pick up so that's it anti backlash rear spring okay now what we're going to do is we're going to take the front bit out okay the front part is done with the same allen key and there are four screws holding that in or bolts whichever you want to call them so i tend to undo them first as i say it's you know it's not a five minute job but it's worthwhile and take your time because if it jams up like mine did you'll notice a difference in wandering of cut it was still operating but it this was when that were moving back this was still there and then a split second later it, you'd see it moving it was like that it was delayed all the time okay now what i do and as i say it's entirely up to yourselves when you're doing this is on that side piece there okay just put a scratch okay and on the face then you know we can mark it with a felt pen if you want but it felt pen does wipe off sometimes i know that this goes to the outside it not might not make much difference but sometimes um when they're fitting these and machining them they can make them fit in a certain way and when you put them back on they don't seem right okay so i know that that's going back on the same way okay and that is it's the last screw and that is the last the large part of the anti-backlash okay and you can see the debris and that that's in there again so i wipe that you need some form of lubricant in but As you can see the mark i've put on it and the mark on the side so i know that goes back in that in that way okay so clean that out that's all i did this was absolutely packed and a bit of tissue through And that is reasonably clean in there on that thread now okay that one should do the same bit of tissue i actually wash these down i put them in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner but you, you can brush it down with a bit of isopropyl alcohol if you if it's that bad but i think this is a a maintenance job that wants doing at least depending on what you use it how, how much you use the machine but i think it needs doing at least every six months okay so that is clean now okay so once that's clean take the linear guide rail or lead screw sorry not linear guide rail and i give that a white bar And you can see all the dirt and debris coming off that okay it just goes into a bearing in this side so it's it's a push fit um so as you see that's not moved i can tell that by where the tape is 
but if you were to knock that then it, it just means when you come and set it back up again you've just to, it just takes a little bit longer in respect is you've got to take it that way whereas when i put this back in and fasten it back up put the, the actual connection back on and run the machine it just runs take the tape off it just runs okay so that's that done so now what we're going to do is we're going to fit this in the reverse process and i'll show you how to do that so first thing is line your anti-backlash up your side one put one of your first your screws in a bit fiddly but Last one, there's always one you lose, now don't tighten these up, okay not yet, just take them to the surface so that anti-backlash enables it still to move about, okay, I'll show you why. I mean, I'm not seeing anybody taking this apart on YouTube at the moment, but um, I've only done this really on request, and really I should have thought about when I put the video out that people probably will have the same fault. Okay, so those screws are back in. Right, the next thing we're going to do is pop your unit, your lead screw through there, and put your rear anti backlash on. Okay. spring back into there okay you feel it fitting and then what you do is you push that back in there on the spring okay and then you feel it fitting into the the other front part okay now that's located in there all right you'll get a little bit of slight little bit of movement on your anti-backlash but that's that's the way it is they're not like ball screws keep turning this until you get up to the other end keep on going and you'll see and go into the bearing make sure it goes into the the bearing at that side which it is just keep taking it in you see that once you get the stepper motor up that has to be at the bottom there for your connection and then what you do is you know that that's right and it's in right because if you try and move it it'll try and move your frame okay put that back in there now what you do is you actually put your screws back in if they've come out um mine are still in there and wind these and connect these back up to your step them up okay so that's, right that's back secured and then clip your stepper motor connection back in okay so that's now back in now what you do is you can see that that's central there and that's why you don't tighten these up yet and then you can tighten these up because you know that's the putting the lead screw in has actually lined it all back up from one end to the other when i first did this i checked one of these screws and it was well two of them were loose so and i hadn't noticed and until i actually did this it had still been like that there yeah all done tighten back in okay 
this is what I use it's a little bit of release compound um, and it's very very good and all I do is put it near the the lead screw and the anti backlash okay so when you move it again it will pick that up and take it into the anti backlash okay don't need much on so that is that put back in place okay just wipe my hands can now take the tape off okay that hasn't moved all done clean now what we do is we put the plates back on Right, that's that side plate on. We'll put the outer one on now. And remember, when you're putting these back in, try not to cross thread them. Because the only way you can do that is only to run a tap back down okay and remember on these you've one screw that is shorter than the other ones okay and that is solely because it goes in here um, next to where the bearing is um, that's where these have come out from the shorter one a bit fiddly to start is a shorter one as I say they don't have to be wrenched over just get them near enough before you... so they're in place one two three four okay so that is job complete now and what I'm going to do now is I'll turn the machine round and I'll fire it up and show you how it works after you've done this um, dismantle okay and remember this needs to be done periodically otherwise you will end up with a problem right here we are at the machine now again turned it round powers on mpg controller which is ideal for once you've done this remember we've lubricated so we need to go back a little bit so i will be going plus which is that way okay and you can see it moves quite easy and then bring it forward okay and then back and forwards again and I do this normally a couple of times no squeaking no squealing and that will be perfectly square again
okay job done right as you can see with that um, how I showed you how to do that if you do it procedure of taking it out and putting it back in is virtually the same um, I can do it within 20 minutes if I'm not filming but I can't stress enough uh, just to leave that like that and not do anything with it you will end up with problems I did I, w I haven't had any confirmation but anybody else has had the same problems but if I had done a circle cut a circle out on that the two parts of the circle where it started and stopped would not have lined up but the simple reason is as it's going round it's delaying that cut it wouldn't have been a circle so it affected it um, quite considerable um, so it's one of the things I think it needs periodical maintenance um, they won't tell you how to do that in the um, instruction book for simple reason it's some people won't be able to do it no disrespect to anybody out there um, but some people will find it quite stressful doing that they're okay operating the machine but to do that they don't really want to do you know take it apart and to do this side is just as simple to do that side as well okay now I've done both mine um, but as I say I prefer to have mine back along the lead screw so that I can clean a lot of the debris off by pulling the lead screw out okay if you do it here you do it maybe 20 turns and it's out and you can deal with it but I'm not a lover of that I thought I want to clean that lead screw and the better way to clean it is pull it through the um, anti-backlash and also you've got your control box here so it's a bit difficult to go in there and do it so I prefer um, to do it where I showed you in situ so I'll just go over first things you do first things you do remove both side plates okay once you remove those tape around just to give you an indication that when you're putting the lead screws back in you're not moving that okay and forcing it over and once you've done that then undo your stepper motors um, force bolts on the inside make sure you've got a good allen key as well once you've taken that out then turn the knob on the end of the stepper motor and you'll see your lead screw coming out okay and then once you can get on the lead screw use the lead screw to get it out it's a bit you get a bit of dirt on your hand but that's not a problem just keep winding it out until the, it pops out of your front the large part of the anti-backlash and then the back part the 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 t site type section comes out with the spring don't lose the spring because otherwise it doesn't work and then reversal is the same as i showed you um put it all back in wipe it all clean and then i i don't put grease inside the um the actual lead screw um anti-backlash i actually put it on the actual lead screw okay but it's your choice that's the only way that i do it and then once you've actually completed that and got it back tighten your anti-backlash four bolts up okay once you've got all the lead screw back in all right and it, you'll see you'll feed it when you're feeding the anti-backlash together you, you can feel it it'll push it in as far as you can and then just start to turn it and you'll see feel it pick up and then it keeps that nice and, and tight in there okay and then once you've done that you're ready to power up what I do is move it backwards and forwards with the MPG and then I home it okay just bring it to home and then job's done okay um, that's the ending to this video uh, I hope it's helped somebody um, there's a few that sass me and one gentleman in particular um, and I said if I can do a video I will do um, now you'll have to bear with me in the next run up till Christmas um, may have a I don't think I've got any more videos coming out because um, I'm due to go in on the 19th of this month for a complete left knee replacement okay um, but I'm going to do a little bit of a, a video on that I feel that a lot of people have that done and they don't know 
how they've they've got to the situation and um, mine was a simple um mistake i made uh, in the kitchen just stood uh, but i'll go through that in the video and i'll show you after i've had the operation and um, just keep you informed so please my subscribers bear with me um i can't be well i would but my wife won't let me she'll come down on me like a sack of spuds if i if i get caught down here on my crutches so please bear with me okay don't forget like and subscribe give me a thumbs up if you if you like the video and uh, and as I, I always say at the end of my videos be safe be careful and bye for now bye